touch on what you think on Twitter at Talk To Me Radio UK. And remember, that's the number two in Talk To Me Radio UK. Right, let's talk to Quentin Wilson from the Fair Fuel UK campaign group. A few years ago, you'll remember, we were all being told to buy diesel cars. We were being told they're the future in terms of cost, performance and in terms of our health benefits. A lot of us switched from diesel to petrol. Now diesel is more expensive than petrol. Then we had all these cars failing their emission tests. And as I said at the time, I was pretty convinced it wouldn't just be Volkswagen who were doing this. It would be a lot of them. And now we're being told diesel's bad for our health. Ever got the feeling you've been conned? Quentin Wilson joins us. Hiya, Quentin. Morning. What on earth is going on? Well, it is a right royal mess. <laughs> and like all these kind of transport motoring things, the government gets it so wrong. And they're concentrating on, on, on the emissions after the BW scandal. But what we should be looking at is the older diesels, um, the badly maintained, worn ones that we see on the streets pushing out all this black particulate matter. And unbelievably, John, that's never measured. There's no particulate test in the MOT. So um, we don't know how bad all this is. So concentrating on, on, on the, 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 the nitrous oxide and the particular emissions of new cars is completely missing the point. So it's something that the government really does need to look at. And we know that the, the things fitted to cars like diesel particulate filters and exhaust gas recirculation valves, which are meant to limit the amount of particulates, coming out the exhaust, they don't work, they get blocked out, the breakdown organisations are called out to hundreds of thousands of, of, of DPF failures every year. So we've massively underestimated this public health issue. So what should they have done? Well, they should have understood that um, worshipping at the altar of CO2 back in 2001 and, and, and reducing the duty on diesel actually made us all, as you said in your intro, uh, shift to... Um, to, to diesel cars away from petrol, and that was wrong. They ignored all the research that was available. But it's something we just don't know about. And now we've got this this, this groundswell to penalise uh, all these people who well-intentionally changed over to diesel. Um, and it looks like, you know, they may hike diesel, they may put um, these congestion zones that are being mooted by the EU in every city. Where does the money go? We're back into sure. the EU. And, and you've got the EU being really hypocritical with, with subsidising diesel in places like France and Italy and Germany um, and then saying that we need cleaner air legislation. Sure. And the net effect will be that when you go to trade in your motor, the dealer will suck in air between his teeth and all the diesel values yeah, have yeah. dropped. And so we're all going to be done on that level, aren't we? That's right. We need a particular test um, in the MOT to measure how much stuff is being chucked out. And, I mean, I've got to argue for clean air here. I can't, I can't take completely the, the, mm. the, the, the driver's position here because we've got to be responsible. But drivers should not be penalised for making this decision and doing what they thought was the right thing. At one stage in the, in the Highway Code, John, it said, if you want to buy a green car, buy a diesel. Really? And that is just absolutely, <laughs> completely and utterly wrong. It's this old thing when, when, when government gets involved with, with, with cars and, 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 and motoring, they do get it catastrophically wrong. And what we don't want to, to see at Fair Fuel is perfectly reasonable, respectable people who are trying just to save money because of the high price of petrol and, and, and fuel duty to actually be penalised financially for, for, for doing what they've done. And you weren't surprised, I guess, that all these fuel emissions were being falsified or they had software? Because I, I don't think I was. No, and again, it's an EU and governmental responsibility. This was on their watch. They had this system, um, and they allowed it to, to carry on, and it was, it was their standards that were implemented, and it was completely and utterly wrong. It was a static laboratory test where it should have been real driving emissions, and they've known about this for years and years and years, so this, this chorus of outrage is, 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 to, is completely hypocritical and wrong. And what do they do about the fact that people who bought Volkswagens? Are they going to get penalised as well in terms of the, the value of their second-hand cars? I don't think the value of, 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 of brand new or, or, or late VWs is going to plummet. Um, and I think you know the American class action suits over there, um, getting compensation for diesel VW owners. Um, that, that's just the way America does things. I think that's a, a big distraction. What we've got to look at is, is these older cars, which are far, far, far more polluting. So I think if you've got a, a, a diesel VW, don't worry over much that the second-hand price will plummet because they're still good cars. The problem is, if the government starts with a knee-jerk reaction, raises the duty on diesel, or raises VAD, VD, or puts in these, these congestion zones where we have to pay to enter, then they're going to be ignoring all the buses, all the vans, all the trucks that really are the old ones that are pushing 
know, all this stuff. And, and I guess they will be tempted to do exactly what you just said, put the duty up, enter in the congestion charges, etc., etc. And this will be EU legislation that defeats us, and, and it is such a hypocritical position. So I'd like to see a working party, and, and Fair Fuel is really up for a scrappage scheme, even though the REC say it's not justified. I just don't think we've even measured the, the, the particulates and the soot that comes out of older diesel. It's just not on the radar at all, and once we, we start measuring this, we'll see how bad it is. And why has the diesel gone up? Well, we're now back at 109. We were at 99p a few weeks ago. Because it, it gives the retailers a bigger margin. They know that there's, there's, there's a lot of diesel cars out there. Uh, diesel is now, what, 5p wholesale, uh, less than petrol, yet it's actually more expensive at the pumps. And that's another thing Fair Fuel is not happy with, that retailers are taking advantage of diesel drivers. So we're being chewed at round the corners from all these different areas, and it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse, and something's got to be done. Some grown-up, intelligent, informed debate about how we deal with this public health issue. Great talking to you, Quentin. Thanks for taking the time today. Quentin Pleasure. Wilson from the Fair Fuel Campaign. Make sure you check out their website. It's, absolute, it's outrageous, isn't it? They do treat us like mushrooms. Keep us in the dark and keep feeding us bull you know what. Absolute joke. An absolute joke.